Hey guys, Andrew here from eCommerce Fuel, and in this video, I want to talk about uh, some common mistakes that are made when using the Google Keyword Tool for niche research. I uh, also want to talk about what kind of traffic you can expect to get for a number one ranking in Google, and also where you really should be looking uh, for the majority of your traffic. It, uh, it's probably not where you think. So as you can see here, I've got the uh, the Keyword Tool page open, uh, and we're going to go ahead and use coffee mugs for this uh, for this demo. Before you do run any queries, I suggest clicking this only show ideas closely related to my search terms box. It'll give you much better results out of the gates. And uh, I like to search by local monthly uh, search volume to begin with. So real briefly, uh, we've got all the uh, keywords here, obviously. Uh, the competition uh, in uh, the Google Ad Network uh, lets you know how many people are, are bidding for this keyword. Uh, the global monthly searches and the local monthly searches. If you're doing this for e-commerce, uh, you'll want to focus on the local monthly searches. Those will be much more applicable. So the most important thing to understand, and probably the biggest mistake people make when using the keyword tool, is not understanding how match, uh, the different match types work. And as you can see, there's three different types of matches, broad, exact, and phrase. And the keyword tool defaults to broad. So broad match, like the name implies, is going to include pretty much anything uh, related to your search term. So for coffee mugs, uh, if somebody typed in, what type of coffee should I put into my mugs, um, that would pop up. Uh, you know, ignoring the fact it's a ridiculous search to begin with, but uh, the two words don't have to be next to each other. Uh, you know, the order isn't as important. Um, I think it might even, if mugs was first and coffee was there, that might show up as well. Uh, so it's really gonna, gonna give you a huge variety of different searches. Uh, so broad isn't quite, is, isn't real accurate. Uh, phrase is much better. Uh, and phrase is gonna only return search queries that use the phrase coffee mugs in that order. Um, it'll still return some extra things and some extra queries. So for example, if someone typed in where, where can I buy coffee mugs, or I hate coffee mugs, um, or my wife keeps hitting me with coffee mugs, you know, any of those uh, w w would pop up under, uh, you know, under phrase match, but it is a little more accurate. Uh, but, but the best of all these is going to be exact match. An exact match, like the name of prize, is only gonna is only going to show uh, search queries or report search volume for the exact search coffee mugs, and this is going to be usually what what I use and, and what I recommend using when you're doing research, uh, because it's going to filter out a lot of that extraneous information. So we can see down here now coffee mugs. Uh, we've got you know 12,000 local monthly searches, and uh, which which is great. So you might be thinking, oh, hey, 12,000 local monthly searches. If I'm number one for Google, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get almost all of those. And uh, as wonderful as that would be, that's just not the case. And, and the reason is because Google has gotten more aggressive recently with their advertising. Uh, here I've got the, uh, the Google listings for coffee mugs. And you can see uh, Zazzle is, is the number one organic listing or the, the number one non-paid listing that Google, uh, that Google displays. But above them, they've got three ads here, uh, and you've also got this big sidebar on the right with a bunch of pictures and paid advertisements. And so there's a lot of you know there's a lot of stuff co competing for that number one spot that's paid advertisement. And I can tell you based on a number of uh, keywords that my business is ranked number one for, that uh, based on the results Google will show you in the keyword tool, you can probably you can you can. You, Plan on getting about 30% of uh, the volume if you rank, if you have a number one ranking. Uh, and that, that's a little squishy. It could range anywhere from 30 to 50%, but 30% tends to be much, uh, to be much more accurate in, in my experience. So out of 12,000 local monthly searches, if you have the number one ranking, that Zazzle site, it's probably only seeing 4,000 people a month for this. So maybe you'll, just a few over, you know, maybe 120, 130 people a day, uh, which can be a little, a little, a little depressing. But the good news is you're not going to get the majority of your traffic from this this number one uh, uh, money term is what I refer to it as you know kind of your root term where where you're going to get probably 80 to 90 percent of your traffic um, is in the long tail variations of that term so for example we've got coffee monks here but listed below that, the second uh, second highest uh, volume query is personalized coffee monks with 3,600 
custom coffee mugs, travel coffee mugs, funny coffee mugs, and these are what I refer to as long tail uh, variations or long tail keywords. Uh, and they're just the root keyword obviously with some additional uh, modifiers on there. And the thing that's, that's great about these long tail keywords is, is one, they're easier to rank for because not as many people are going after them. And two, they usually convert at a much higher rate uh, than kind of your primary, primary keyword uh, because they're more specific. And if you serve up a, uh, a page that's optimized for, for that term, whether it's travel coffee mug or um, you know, personalized coffee mug, uh, you'll be able to get a much higher conversion rate on there. So this is where you're going to get 80 to 90% of, your, of your, uh, your traffic. And when you're researching a niche, uh, be looking for lots of these variations. Uh, in this coffee mug example, you know, we've got you know, almost a dozen here with, with more than 500, 500 search terms, maybe more than that. Uh, so look for lots of variations in the long tail. And also look for the search, uh, the search fund. You want to make sure that it's, you're always going to have it drop off. You're never going to have, or very infrequently, are you going to have the long tail variations have as much volume as, as your money or root keyword. But you want to see, once you do get into those long tail variations, they don't drop off too significantly. And here, there's, you know, for coffee mugs, it's pretty decent. You know, you've got 3,600, 2,900. Uh, you know, you've got about, oh, it looks like six or seven there in the thousand range. And then we've got another dozen probably, you know, in the 400 to 1,000 range, which is what I would call a deep niche. Um, so that's, that's a really encouraging sign. So let's look at a different example, fish finders. I'll sort these by local monthly search volume. Again, we're on exact match here. And you can see fish finders, it has about 2,400 uh, exact matches per month. And then we've got, a, we've got a few variations. We've got Eagle Fish Finders, Laurent's Fish Finders, Humminbird Fish Finders. Um, but, uh, you know, really only a couple in the, in just, there's three there in the thousand range. And then we drop way off to 300 and 200. And by the time we're a dozen down, we're in the 100s. Or even, you know, 10 down, we're in the 100s. So this isn't to say this market would be awful, but I, I would, I'd be a little leery of, of um, the fact that it's not a deep market. There's not a lot of long tail variations. And so instead of maybe getting, you know, you know, 80 to 90% of your, your uh, keyword traffic from long tail variations, this might be something where maybe it's more like 65 to 75%. Again, these are ballpark numbers, but uh, um, you do want to look, look for those long tail variations. They're indicative of, of, um, of good markets to get into and, and uh, indicative of the possibility of, of a lot of your traffic coming from those long tail variations. So three key takeaways for this video. The first is make sure you're using phrase or even better exact match uh, to get more precise results when you use the keyword tool. Secondly, uh, just remember that when you are looking at those, uh, those money term volumes that uh, you're only going to get a fraction of those and that's even if you've got a number one listing in Google. Um, so don't, uh, don't overestimate how much traffic you'll get from those. And finally, make sure you're looking at how deep uh, a niche is and uh, looking for those long tail keywords because the more you have of those and uh, the less the volume drops off with those long tail keywords, uh, the better chance you have at getting a lot of traffic in that niche. Um, it's also a great strategy to pursue those long tail keywords in terms of SEO and marketing because you're going to be able to rank for those more easily, uh, there'll be less competition for them, and they'll convert better. So. If you have any questions about this video or uh, about using the keyword tool in general, um, I'd love to answer them. I'll do my best to. Uh, just please leave them in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video and are interested in, uh, in learning more about niche uh, evaluation, um, market research, e-commerce, um, and, and how to start your own business or how to, how to do research and improve your existing e-commerce business, uh, you'll want to check out my ebook, Profitable E-commerce. It's a 55-page, really in-depth guide uh, to, uh, to picking a, an e-commerce niche and, uh, and starting an e-commerce business. Uh, you can get that for free at my website, ecommercefuel.com. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see your questions in the comments below.